Hello everyone, this is Omar Emiligi, a PhD candidate at Concordia University in Canada, and I will now present our work titled Seismic Performance Assessment of Flanged Flexural Dominated Partially Grouted Reinforced Misery Shear Walls. Starting with the outline, I will start with an introduction and background, followed by the research method, uh, methodology and then some results, and finally the summary. Starting with the introduction, the reinforced masonry shear walls are one of the commonly used seismic force resisting systems in North America. Uh, figure one shows the, the components of the reinforced masonry construction, which are the concrete masonry units bonded together using mortar, and then uh, having reinforcement inside the cells with grout inside the cells also. Uh, figures two and three can show examples of the, the reinforced masonry buildings. We can see that the, some buildings can go to large heights using reinforced masonry only, which can prove or can show that like they are promising in uh, construction of large of buildings of large heights. Also, the reinforced reinforce masonry walls can be constructed in uh, in different types of cross sections, similar to the reinforced concrete. They can be rectangular, they can be flanged, or in like different um, layout of the cross sections. Uh, so now moving to the types of the, uh, the masonry constructions, we have main, main two types. We have the fully grouted construction and we have the partially grouted construction. In the fully grouted construction, uh, grout is placed in all cells, whether they are enforced or not. However, in the uh, uh, partially grouted uh, construction, grout is only placed inside the cells with reinforcement, whether they are vertically uh, vertical cells or horizontally reinforced cells. It's so obvious that this type of construction is more economic and it's more uh, it will result in more accelerated process. However, due to the weak connections between the the, the blocks in the ungrouted parts, we are expecting some weak uh, tension and shear uh, failures here, which means that the world, the behavior of the world needs more uh, investigation and more work, more research in order to completely understand how the world is behaving. It's not like homogeneous material as concrete or fully grouted walls. They are different components joined together. So in this study, we are working on partially grouted walls. Then moving to the behavior and failure modes of uh, reinforced masonry walls, similar to reinforced concrete, we have uh, two main failure modes. We have the flexural failure mode and we have the, the shear failure mode. Uh, the flexural failure mode is expected in the slender walls and the shear failure mode is expected in squat walls. In flexural failure mode, we are expecting the, the failure to be in the form of buckling of compression bars, uh, mesonary crushing, uh, uh, spoiling of face shell, and tension uh, uh, yielding of the tension bars or even uh, rupture. However, in the uh, shear failure mode, we are expecting major diagonal cracks. In general, the flexural failure mode is preferred because it's more ductile failure. We, are, we can reach very large ductility with this as opposed to the uh, shear failure model, which is, is somehow different in these criteria. In this study, we are working on slender walls having flexural failure mode. Then moving to the problem statement, the main uh, issue that we have is that the literature lacks comprehensive studies investigating the different seismic divisions for flanged, flexurally dominated, slender, partially grafted walls. In most design provisions in North um, uh, American Missionary Standards, which are mainly the CSA and TMS, the CSA in Canada and the TMS in the US, the, these design provisions are, are selected in a way similar to squat, partially grouted walls, or, uh, or slender, fully grouted walls. Also, the partial, partial grouting is limited to specific cases and aspect ratios of reinforced missionary shear walls in the CSA standards. Which means that we still need more work for the partially grouted walls in slender uh, uh, in slender elements and, and or, or in tall structures. So in order to achieve uh, or uh, like to work on these objectives, we like this research. Uh, this research will include two parts. The part one will be numerical assessment of the CSA and TMS seismic design provisions for flexure dominated partially grouted reinforced masonry shear walls. And in part two, it will be the experimental investigation of the in-plane cyclic response of flanges flexure dominated partially grouted reinforced masonry shear walls. And in this presentation, I am work dealing with the part two of our work, which is the experimental work. 
Then moving to the research methodology of uh, the experimental part. In this work, we are testing two half-scale flanged flexure dominated partially grafted reinforced mesonary shear walls under quasi-static cyclic loading and uh, fixed axial load. Uh, in this study, we are dealing with half-scale mesonary units as shown here in this figure. Um, like they are reduced size uh, concrete mesonary units which are which, that are made especially for research purposes. And in this study, the effect of the aspect ratio will be investigated. And actually, the main contribution of our work here is how is how can we test these types of walls? Because we have now we are working, we are dealing with the cylinder walls or tall walls, so it's not easy to deal with this in the labs. So as can we see here, we have tall uh, wall with a, with an applied axial load and applied horizontal load. This horizontal load is taking the triangular distribution similar to the first mode of, uh, of vibration of the of buildings under earthquake. And, and we are assuming that the resultant force will be at each effective, which is two thirds of the of the height of the structure. Since we can't test this uh, long wall in the lab, we will test the lower only the lower part of the lab, and we'll compensate the difference in height between the H actual and the H uh, in the lab with an additional top moment. This top moment will be applied in the lab through two vertical actuators. Uh, that will be used to apply two equal and opposite forces based on the required value of the moment, in addition to the half of the axial lo uh, load for each actuator of these two actuators. So in this study, we are testing two walls. The first one will be simulating four-story structure. The second one will be simulating eight-story structures. Uh, and these are the actual heights of the walls, and these are the effective heights of the walls, each effective and each wall. And this is a, the tested uh, wall height, which is 1.6 meter. The two walls will be of the same height, and the difference in the needed height will be compensated through uh, an additional two moment, as mentioned, through the control system during the test itself. Uh, so this figure shows the details of reinforcement of the tested walls. We have uh, the vertical reinforcement in red. We have the horizontal reinforcement in, um, in, in blue. You can see here the shape of the footing, which is in I shape, in order to facilitate the movement uh, of the wall during testing. Also, you can see here the instrumentation. Uh, on the left, you can see the LVTTs and potentiometer placed on the wall in order to monitor the movement of the wall, the external movement of the wall, the lateral movement, uh, the, uh, the elongation and shortening of the flanges to calculate the, the, um, the curvature later. And we can see here also the spring gauges attached to the reinforcement to monitor the strains in the outermost rebars in the left and right flanges. You can see here some photos of the construction process. It's a long construction process. It started with the, the bottom footings. We can see here the reinforcement of the footing, the formwork of the footing uh, with, the, with the doubles of the vertical reinforcement out, the pouring process the curing process and finally the footings after removal of the formwork. Then the construction of the masonry walls, we have an experienced mason hired for this uh, task. You can see here also the, the reinforcement coming out and the horizontal reinforcement placed in the bond beams. You can see here the metal sheets or the metal lathe which is used to prevent the grout from moving below the bond beam since it's partially grouted. We can also see here uh, the grouting process with the vibration and some prisms const uh, constructed to uh, obtain the compressive behavior of the of masonry. And then these are the walls after construction. And finally, the construction of the two footings or the loading beams that are used to load the wall. You can see here the, the doubles of the top reinforcement, of the reinforcement, the vertical reinforcement coming out. You can see here the, um, we actually have, we build like a wooden structure to be able to work on the top safely. Uh, to attach the um, the reinforcement and also to pour the wall to uh, or to board the two foot uh, the two footings. These are the footings after the uh, boarding and then after curing, and finally the wall ready for testing. This is a test setup, and as mentioned, we will have two vertical actuators which are used to apply the axial load and the um, at the top moment, and also we have the horizontal actuator which is used to apply the horizontal displacement, the horizontal cyclic displacement. We can see here the first wall inside the testing frame ready for testing. 
and you can see also with the auto plane support which is used to prevent the auto plane movements of the wall since the wall is designed or the setup itself is designed to monitor the in-plane behavior of the in-plane cyclic behavior of the wall. Uh, this video shows the testing of the wall, the actual testing. Here we are doing some quick preparations uh, before the test. And then the test started. Like the displacement are, are not yet obvious because they are uh, somehow small at this stage. Yeah, we can now start. We can now start to see that displacement is increasing. Yeah, no more obvious. You see, the cyclic displacement are very obvious now. Actually, like we enter between each cycle to monitor the cracks, take some photos, and uh, to see what's happening in the wall. And finally, we have the failure of the wall. You can see here a major failure in the flange, in the bottom part of the flange, showing that the wall failed in flexure. Then you can see here some like uh, enlarged photos for the failures. You can see here the the crack uh, of the major failure happening in the masonry in the flange, the right one. But also, there is some face shell spalling in the right, uh, the left flange. And these are the crack patterns happening during the test. This is uh, the hysteresis of uh, of the wall. You can see here that the wall is somehow ductile. You can reach ductility of six, which is more than that required by the code for such type of walls. You can see here, we can also see here the, the strain in the, uh, the, the the big compressive stress is strains in the in the masonry, which are more way more than what's given by the code, showing that they are ductile and we can have good behavior using such type of then moving to a summary, uh, I started with an introduction, a, a background followed by the research methodology, and then some results, and finally, the summary. These are my main references. And then finally, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Professor Khaled Galal and Dr. Bilal Abdurrahman, and our funding agencies, the NSERC, AMEQ, Canada Missing Design Center, and CCMPA. And then, thank you all. And now questions are welcomed.